This is Alan Weinkrantz for EveryWire. I am here today with Emmanuel Sambui, who is the general manager of the Metering BU MCU division in the semiconductor group at Texas Instruments in Dallas. Welcome. Hey, thanks, Alan. Thanks for coming and pleased to meet you. Uh, thank you for joining us. Tell me about your role at Texas Instruments and, and what do you do? So basically, uh, TI decided um, after summer last year to spin the metering business unit, and our role is to um, promote and sell the TI technologies um, um, related to the smart grid and to the uh, metering uh, world. Okay. Describe the vision for TI smart metering and what's really behind the portfolio. So, what's uh, uh, typically a smart grid is basically um, a grid and with advanced communication capabilities. So basically what we do is uh, in our team we focus a lot on the metering business which typically includes uh, gas, water and um, electric meters and we attach communication capabilities to those meters. Okay. Um, How is the wired home network? You know that's really been the focus of this this blog is on the wired home network and the G.HN standard. So how's the high wired home network as you know it today, going to change as homes are more connected to the smart grid? So basically there are uh, two different areas of, um, of um, discussions right now. There is what we call the home, when you name it, the home area network, and we have a range of activities in the, in the hand. There is also the connection of the home to the rest of the grid. This is typically called uh, the local area network and sometimes the, the wide area or the neighborhood area networks. Uh, and these are two different areas we concentrate on. So there are already, and if you look at the U.S., massive deployments of um, AMR systems or AMI systems uh, in the NAN. And uh, we are also looking right now at what's happening on the home area network side with a range of technologies coming up, such as um, low power RF communication as well as power line communication. Okay. So how is TI's role in this technology helping to make a more efficient use of energy? So, as I said before, so we want to um, basically add advanced communication capabilities to a power grid. Um, what does this bring? Well, the goal is, is very much to basically you know, support almost like real-time monitoring of what's happening on the grid so that we can basically influence um, the load on the grid as well as the behavior of the people using the grid. And uh, let me just maybe illustrate this with one very specific example. Um, electric vehicles. There is a clear trend now for people to actually move to using electric vehicles. Um, everybody knows, especially at the utility level, that um, we, we will add a number of cars, electric cars, in the coming years. Typically, people are talking hundreds of thousands, millions of cars you know, coming up and connecting to the grid. That will require a, a, a real-time monitoring of the load of the network to make sure that the grid can actually support all these cars being connected at the same time. Okay. Um, why does G.HN matter and why did TI join uh, you know, the board of, of HomeGrid? Exactly. So as you, as you said, so TI rejoined actually uh, the HomeGrid forum you know, and, and took a, a board of director position in the G. A, uh, in, at HomeGrid. The purpose for us is really to focus on what has been called G.HN EM. Right. Yeah, I just saw that. That was interesting. Yeah, which is the energy management side of the home networking. And uh, if we go a little bit more into the specifics, actually, what we are looking at is actually driving the standardization of power line communication through the G.H and EM activities within home grid. Uh, we are also a member of the IEEE uh, P1901.2, which is actually another consortium, you know, driving standardization of power line communication. Um, in the home uh, area network, as well as in the uh, in the neighborhood area network. Okay, yeah, and you sort of answered this already, but how do you see your role in helping build out this vision in the, really the true wired home network? So what's happening is we currently see two big um, opportunities, at least business opportunities, popping up. Uh, I name one of them, you know, the electric vehicle. This is more into the hand because basically what's going to happen is people will have charging stations in their homes and they will connect their car to the charging station you know, with the intention to recharge their car maybe during the night. Um, there is also another set of activities you know, drive, uh, driven at the, home er uh, sorry, at the neighborhood area network level. 
And actually, um, if you look at uh, Europe, for instance, there is um, U.S. is mostly uh, looking at uh, short-distance RF communication right. for connecting the meters to um, the backhaul or the substations. Yurt is actually looking at power line communication to connect the uh, the smart the electric meters to the to the substations. So what uh, we're doing at the uh, home grid and at the IEEE level is basically how you know finding a common standards for all these two activities you know, to basically drive a standardization of the power line communication um, technology to hopefully you know what's going to be a, a worldwide standard. Okay. Uh, obviously TI's chips and your products are really very much a part of our everyday lives. You know when we were talking I talked about you know I think of speak and spell as you know with my kids or calculators and of course all kinds of semiconductors that live inside products that really make our lives better. So with your trying to, you know, link the home, the automobile, the smart grid is really a very compelling vision. What societal changes do you see coming about as your contribution to all this? Well, I think the, the cost of energy is definitely, definitely going to move up in the coming years and everybody needs to be prepared for that. Um, so, well, the TI, uh, the addition of all these technologies through the TI portfolio and you named um, some examples, you know, where TI is mostly a, a semiconductor vendor. So we have a range of technologies, you know, from RF communication, power line, metrology chips as well. We help a lot, you know, putting our metrology devices in the meter so that basically people can get a more accurate vision of their real-time consumption. But I think all of this is going to drive, you know, the, uh, the, the behavior, behavior change, you know, for people, as well as a much better... Um, visibility of their their energy consumption in in real time because that's really the ultimate goal is how can you change you know you, the usage you make of energy um, if you don't have a measurement for it you need first to get a measurement and then you need to change your behavior ah good good insight obviously energy is a big issue in our global economy so how do we as a global society stand to benefit from these types of innovations well, I think it's gonna it's gonna drive a range of new of new technologies. Um, if you look at what's happening, you know, on electric vehicle, you know very well that uh, there are uh, new technologies being actually developed, like intelligent batteries. Right. Um, all of this is gonna is gonna change the way we live. Um, we're gonna have to be a little bit more careful on how we use energy. Uh, we're gonna have to decide as well is is when do we want to use it. Uh, flexible tariff is also a true. Uh, thing happening right now. Uh, we know that the utilities want to influence our behavior by implementing a flexible tariff, which is not the case in, in most regions today. So we're going to have to decide you know, when we want to power our home, when we want to use our, the energy we burn, uh, when we want to start our washer, our dryer. All of this is going to have to be decided by us. And the good thing is we're going to have the possibility to, to, to do this. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, Alan. I appreciate it.